You, my dear, are looking a little extra spooky holding that guy today. Can't stop smelling his head. Does he have a smell? He smells like rubber. He smells like rubber? He smells like a haunted house. I can, I can yeah. see that. I like you. And the casting, yeah. I like him. Trick or Treat Studios really did a nice job on him. Yeah, I'm glad we get to actually take him into where the movie Saw was filmed. For today's Grim Adventure, we find ourselves in a place called Lacey Street Production Center, or Studios, where back in 2004, they filmed a horror movie here called Saw. Recognize this face and that face? What the heck? And this face? We're all going inside. We're gonna to try to document as much as we possibly can how the filming locations to the 2004 movie Saw look like today. about ready to walk inside and I turn around and Jessica has turned into the creepy creepy doll himself all right you ready for it you ready to go inside and get dirty all right Now this is extra special because not only is it the Grimm's here where they filmed Saw in 2004, but we also have Billy the Doll from the movie Saw. Now extra creepy, now he doesn't move, he's stationary. We, we do not have a bicycle either, like a little tricycle. But, are you ready for this baby ghoul? This hallway that we're standing in right now, a very, very bloody scene happened here. All right, you wanna go up to the Saw room? Let's go. Now, as we walk up there and we walk down this hallway, we're gonna come back down it in a little bit and we're gonna line up some shots, talk about what happened and even go down inside the basement. But this here, right above where Jessica is right now, is the room, the bathroom from the movie Saw. Now these steps were used in the filming as well. We're gonna talk about it in just a moment. But the whole point of this is to go all the way up to the top, the second floor of this building. All right. This is just pretty much, this is blowing my mind. This is the bathroom from the movie Saw. It looks a heck of a lot different, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah? They built the entire room. The walls were fake, the floors were fake. It was all wood, actually. It looks like real tile, but it's actually all wood that you see in the film. Now you know us, every time we do a filming location, we do the best we can in lining up shots. Now like Jessica said, this entire room, they built the entire set. It took two weeks to turn this into the bathroom for the movie Saw. But we're gonna line up a few things as best as we can. And for that, we actually need, you know, John Kramer, Jigsaw, to be laying in the middle of the room. And since we don't have him. Stand in. Got the stand in. Go ahead, put him in the center, baby. All right. So he's not life size, but. Little I'd say, no, he's a little closer to me. A little closer. A little closer. closer. Right about there. Now he would have been laying face down in a pool of blood and one of the clues that Jigsaw gives is, you know, when you have enough poison in your veins, the best thing you can do at that point is to shoot yourself. There's a man in the room with you. When there's that much poison in your blood, the only thing left to do is shoot yourself. Now we all know, if you've watched the movie Saw, what happens to the man in the middle of the room, but, we have a few things to line up. 
Now that we have everything set, well, Billy laying in the spot where Jigsaw would have been, the opening shots of the movie are on this side of the room. Over here in this corner is where Lee Whannell, the guy who wrote the movie, would have woken up inside the bathtub. The bathtub would have been right there where that table is. And as he gets out of the bathtub, he lays over here in this corner because he can't get out. He's actually chained to the pipes in the corner. Now the pipes were fake. Everything inside this room was built only for this and it was all taken down after that. It's a pretty big room for was it two weeks, a little over two weeks, 18 days is how long it took to film this movie. And that means completely on the other side of the room, now you see that door there. If you're a fan of the movie Saw, you know exactly what that door is and we're gonna talk about it in just a little bit. But for right now, right where Jessica is, over here in this corner, this is where Carrie Olwes was, where he was tied, well, chained, to the really dirty and disgusting pipes. Do you call it pipes or pipage? I'm gonna say pipes that were behind him. Like at one point he even touches one of the pipes and the pipe moves. Like pipes aren't supposed to do that. And you can tell that it was a set, although it looks very real. When they wake up, inside their pockets, they find envelopes with their names on it. And inside the envelopes are two cassette tapes, one for each of them that says, play me. When Carrie listens to his, he listens to it again because at the very end, he hears a faint whisper that says, follow your heart. Now looking around the room, they discover that right next to Lee Wanell's character, there's a toilet that's filled with something pretty nasty. And written on the side of it is the shape of a heart. He digs in it, and he eventually he finds two saws. We only have one. How about passing me that saw? You want this? I want the saw. All right. It's my turn for saw. All right, baby. You asked for it. There you go. Salvation. Gotta get out of these chains. Gotta get... Wait a minute. I don't think these are meant to go through the chains. I think he wants us to... cut off our foot. He doesn't want us to cut through our chains. He wants us to cut through our feet. Now, please don't knock us because of how bad this prosthetic leg looks like. We ordered it online, it's crap. Now, later on in the movie, Carrie Elwes actually cuts off his leg and he ditches it. Kinda like that, great acting, much applause. But whenever he first gets the hacksaw, which is what Jessica is holding, again, not an actual prop from the movie, something we had laying around the house because we collect weird things, weird medical items. He starts cutting his leg, trying to free himself. Now here's the fun thing about this. He actually did cut his leg. Now, whenever he was doing this, this scene, he was cutting very slowly and James Wan was like, listen man, if you were really doing this in real life, trying to free yourself, you'd be cutting pretty frantically. So he started cutting and cutting and cutting and he actually did cut himself, but not with the sharp edge. It was the blunt edge. They turned the blade completely around. Uh, I did actually cut my leg when I did that. Um, even though they, they blunted the hacksaw, um, the, uh, James was yelling at me, faster, faster. And I was like, well, that makes sense. I mean, I'm, I think I would definitely be doing it faster if I wanted to get this thing done. And uh, before long, I felt this twinge of ow. <laughs> and, and before you know it, the, uh, the, the fake glucose blood was mixing with the real thing, but it was just a small cut, it's nothing. Here, you can see it there. There you go. There, an acting exercise. <laughs> now, while all this is happening, Tobin Bell's character, Jigsaw, John Kramer, is still laying in the center of the room, and we're gonna walk around the room like this so you can get a good 360 view of what we're looking at. Now here's the crazy thing about this. We did say that it took them about two weeks to create this bathroom. All the tile that you see on the walls, fake. it's fake. It's, it's wood, it's etched and painted wood yep. and it looks so realistic. Yep. Now right behind where Jessica is standing, well sitting I should say, right behind her, you see some pipes. Now we did everything we possibly could to try to line up shots 
you know, does this pipe look like this? Does this ceiling look like this? They completely built this entire room. 100%, they turned it into their own stage. Yeah, yeah. like all the pipes, mm -hmm. they brought them in. All fake walls, yeah. fake floor. The fake lights, mm -hmm. everything in here was fake. They even edited the door in a way that they kind of um, built a wall here. So in the movie, their door slides into a wall. Yeah. It doesn't slide into a wall here. And we noticed that the, the door itself was a lot wider. So they built to extend the door but you, there's a few telltelling signs that there are some bars that you can see still evidence on the door here that were still there when they did the movie and when they laminated the door, you see these little humps. Now, if we look at the actual door, it looks a lot smaller than it did in the movie. And like Jessica said, they did build a little like facade. Think of it like an entrance to a haunted mm -hmm. house, you know, yeah. something over it so they can do whatever they wanted and still not damage the building in any way. After all, this is an historical landmark. There are a few other things that I do want to point out. For instance, at the very beginning of the movie, whenever they wake up and they're trying to figure out where they are and why they are here, Everything in this room is looking old and patinaed and nasty and disgusting. But Kerry Olwes, he notices that there's a clock on the wall right about there that's brand new. And he says something along the lines of, you know, well, above Somebody everything. Somebody wants us to know what time it is. Yeah, they want us to know what time it is. Yeah. That clock, what about it? It's brand new. Somebody obviously wanted us to know the time. And do you remember the scene where they turn off the lights for the X marks the spot? Well, that would have been around in this area where he takes the butt of his saw, breaks out some of the tiles that had been closed up and finds the box. The little lock on it requires a key. Do you remember what's in that box? The cigarettes are harmless, I promise. Smoking is only poisonous when it ends in bloodshed. Think about this. You don't need a gun to kill Adam. And another landmark in this room, right over in front of Jessica, there's a scene where after Lee Wanell's character breaks the hacksaw that Jessica is holding, it's not the exact hacksaw from the movie. No, mine's nice. <laughs> but he throws it against the wall and he ends up breaking out a piece of glass that turns out to be a two-way mirror. And on the other side of it, they find that they're being watched, that there's a camera back there watching their mm. every, every like move. Like set into the wall. <clears throat> If you're a fan of the movie Saw, then obviously you know that there are some twist endings for one whenever Tobin Bell gets up off the floor. But there's one more scene that we need to show in this room before we say goodbye, and that's the door that's behind me. As Tobin Bell Jigsaw gets up, he walks over to this door and he says, oh yeah, well, so many words, the key to free yourself is in the bathtub. And the very opening shot, it goes down the drain. And he goes and he shuts the door and he says, Game over. And this is a heavy door. You can see him get some back behind it. Key to that chain is in the bathtub. Game over. over. How cool is that? You are so freaking spooky. Now this portion of our Saw filming location video may make you dizzy. Now what I said earlier about they filmed the entirety of the movie Saw here at Lacey Street Productions. All the interiors they filmed here now this room right here, which is right next to the saw room, they did a lot of filming here. A lot of the torture scenes. Now Jessica is hiding over there. I'm gonna come over and check you out because this is, I'm gonna go this way. There we go. It's not real, but we do have a Trick or Treat Studios replica reverse bear trap. Pretty close to the same one that Shawnee Smith was wearing. She played Amanda in the movie Saw. 
could taste was blood. And metal. Now, different interviews of this scene, it said that Shawnee Smith was actually really sick whenever she was here filming it, that she had like a 102 degree fever and she was feeling a little, no, well, not too good, but they got her in the contraption and James Wan did this wonderful thing where he just had her sitting in a chair. They built a circular dolly track and all they did was walk around her like this as she tried to get out. After struggling for some time, she ends up freeing herself a little bit. She stands up and in doing so, a pin is pulled and she realizes, oh crap, th this is serious. And it's at this point she notices that there's a body laying on the other side of the room and she remembers what Jigsaw told her that the key to save herself is actually in the stomach of that guy. Another twist, he really wasn't dead. He was actually drugged. But she takes a really tiny knife and she cuts him up and she takes it out and she frees herself just in time and she throws the contraption on the floor. Go ahead. It's pretty similar to that. There is only one key to open the device. It's in the stomach of your dead soulmate. <laughs> There's another torture device scene that happens here in this area of Lacey Street Productions. It's the, the naked guy who's covered in some flammable stuff and written on the walls around him are different numbers. Now, what's really funny about this, and I kind of chuckle about it, if you listen to the DVD extras, the audio commentary, it turns out that all those numbers on the wall aren't really just random. They're the cast and crew members phone numbers and numbers of X's, just any number, any digit that they could think of. And they tell, well, Jigsaw tells the guy, the naked guy, hey, in order to free yourself, the combination to that safe that holds the, you know, your way out is written on the wall somewhere. You better find it. <sighs> well, he ends up getting a little charred and that dummy that burn victim, they said, is probably one of the, the most costly rentals of the entire 18-day shoot. After Danny Glover gets his throat slit by Jigsaw, Detective Singh comes right down these stairs and it looks identical to the way it did back in 2004 the red walls, the white brick. He comes right down these stairs, chasing after Jigsaw. And as Detective Singh turns the corner after coming down the stairs, he sees Jigsaw about halfway down the hallway here, and he calls out to him to stop. He doesn't, so what's he do? He shoots him. And as he gets closer to figure out, hey, what's going on, right about here, right where this brick archway is, he hits trip wire and it causes these shotguns to shoot him from up above, down on him, and of course Detective Singh, that's the end of him. Now real quick, here's a shot of the other side of the archway. They show this very quickly. There's shotguns lined up there, and those are the shotguns that Detective Singh would have tripped whenever he hit that trip wire. It's crazy to think that we're standing here. Like, this is cool. Now real quick, upstairs, I did mention that this place has a historical aspect to it. Now, of course, Saw wasn't the only movie that was filmed here. Right now, as we're doing this, there's another production that's getting ready to happen. Don't know anything about it. And that's perfectly fine. But back in the day, um, the first Leprechaun had some scenes that were filmed here. Uh, Cagney and Lacey was filmed here. Um, some rap videos. I even think I read online something about some adult videos. Don't know too much about that, but this place has been around. It's an active production studio. They actually film things here. I feel very honored that we're a part of it. 
Now there's one more special thing down here at the end of this hallway, and that's the entrance to a subterranean level, the basement of Lacey Street Studios. Now we're gonna go down there in just a minute, but I do want to tell you about what to expect. Now of course, a little setup about what we're about to experience is needed. There's a point in the movie where Carrie Elwes, his character realizes that, wait a second, he has an idea. He thinks he knows who might be doing this and he recalls a certain crime where somebody is trapped inside razor wire. That happened down inside this hole. It's very tight quarters and we're going down. Now because this is such tight quarters, we're ditching the gimbal and we're going down What do you want to call it? Like rogue, if you will? <laughs> Completely freehand. Now, if I'm not mistaken, there's a point when they're walking down the steps where he reaches up and he bumps into this, where he grabs onto it. The only reason I know that is because I was a suspect. As he gets down here and he ducks his head. Look at this. Oh my God. Baby, go wait till you see this. This is insane. So I'm guessing right here in the center of us, because this is the biggest open spot, this is where they built the contraption with all the barbed wire and they had a guy in there. Now the story with him, if you remember, uh, he ended up trying to commit suicide. And wrist, yeah, he yeah. slashed his wrist and Jigsaw was like, hey man, you know, did you really mean to do that? If you really want to save your life, you got to crawl through all this barbed wire. And ultimately he did, well he tried to. And the door that's behind you, right over here, I'm going to show it, was on a three minute timer. Three hour. Three hour timer. Yeah, three hour timer. Ah. How crazy cool is that? So even if he would have got out, most of Jigsaw's traps were designed to even if you did get out you wouldn't survive but this is it right now i'm standing in the middle of where all that razor wire the barbed wire would have been in the movie of course they didn't use you know something that sharp it was all rubber but this is it that crazy scene it's probably one of the most disturbing scenes at least for me and of course, you know, Danny Glover, he was really tall and I'm six foot two. I can't, I'm gonna hit my head if I stand up there. Another little interesting tidbit trivia piece about this, the cinematographer that was here filming, when he came down here with the camera on his shoulder, he actually hit his head on one of these beams trying to get the shot. And he had to end up going to the hospital because of a concussion and somebody else had to fix the scenes or finish them, but this is it. Crazy, right? I'm a little nervous being down here. Like, I wish I could look down and just see like a piece of razor wire. You know what? Here's some a piece of rusted metal. I think this is gonna come home with us for our Grim Life Collective, like our collection, our personal collection. That's cool. Now there's only a few more locations that we want to showcase and this is one of them, these steps right here. Now these steps are a lot more wider than the other ones whenever they come down, whenever Detective Singh comes down. But whenever Detective Singh and Danny Glover's character goes up to, you know, basically Jigsaw's lair, like his headquarters, they pretty much walk up shoulder to shoulder. So the stairs had to be a little extra wide and this is it. So that second floor right up there, that was Jigsaw's lair. Now sadly we can't get up there to show you what it looks like today. And of course, everything's changed over the years. So I'm not entirely sure how much we can show you, but there is an active production going on up there. But while Danny Glover and Detective Singh are up there and they see that guy with the, the drills getting ready to go into his head, they hear the elevator come up and it's Jigsaw. The elevator's here too. With the detectives upstairs trying to save the guy so he wouldn't be Jigsaw's next victim. Jigsaw would have been walking probably right over this way towards the elevator and they hear it and they stop and they try to hide, they cover everything back up. But this is the exact elevator that he would have used. And he would have been wearing 
that robe. Man, that's just extra creepy. And Jessica was a little sad that I didn't let her lay in the middle of the floor like Jigsaw would have. So I promised her we'd come back up here to the room and have her do it. Yep, he would have been laying exactly like this. Well, in one hand there would have been a recorder and the other one would have been a gun and surrounding him would be a pool of blood. One of the biggest twists in horror history, I mean, Saw really changed the game, didn't it? How funny is it? Game over. Like he, it was almost like a drop the mic moment. He gets up just like that. There you go. And then he rips off all the special effects makeup. The dude in the corner is flipping out. Right? Now keep in yeah. mind, the guy in the corner, Lee Wanell, he's the guy who wrote this. Yeah. And he acted in it. He knew it was coming and he was still like, he acted really well, yeah. Jessica and I are slightly obsessed with collecting Trick or Treat Studios masks and props. This is the reverse bear trap that Shawnee Smith would have been wearing in the movie Saw. Now an interesting piece of trivia, man, we're filled with those kind of things. Whenever James Wan and Lee Wanell created Saw and they were trying to pitch it to get a feature length movie, they created a short film where uh, Lee Wanell actually wore this in the short film. He created that scene to help sell it. Now here's the fun twisted part about it. In that short film, what he was wearing was pretty close to the actual thing. It was heavy, it was metal, it probably wouldn't have killed him, but it was heavy. When Shawnee Smith put it on, it was pretty light, made out of aluminum and, and rubber. It still had some pieces, like this here. If you watch the special features, it's actually a bicycle gear. The Billy Doll and the Robe are both Trick or Treat Studios. It's pretty cool that we have these in our collection, especially this buddy. I mean, we set him up next to the TV and anytime we're watching anything, he's staring right back at us. I always find it funny. His shoes, they kind of remind me of Dorothy's shoes from Wizard of Oz. That's Jessica. Now tracking down the filming locations to other parts of the movie saw is a little bit hard, mainly because everything that I found online, the addresses, we're all wrong. Right now, I am walking on Palmetto Street, and I'm coming up on the intersection where Palmetto meets Mateo. Now, there's a couple of different warehouses here that the cast, well, the crew, James Wan and Lee Wanell, chose to get some still photos of warehouses. And you'll see what I mean. It all makes sense here in just a minute. Now, in the movie, Danny Glover's character, Detective Tapp, is watching tapes trying to pinpoint where exactly Jigsaw is and in doing so he hears the sound of a fire alarm So he calls his partner over detective Singh and doing some detective Research which is ultimately what they do. They were able to track down that fire alarm to one particular address And that address is to this building right here In fact, you can actually see this building in a series of photos that James Wan and the crew took now you see where it says Starkman, right in the center of the, the building there? You can see that in the photo. It's still here. Tuesday the 17th, we got a fire alarm going off. Now along with the photo of that building, they took a couple other different pictures and that collage that they show. And I thought that I was gonna have to do a lot of driving and a lot of research, but this street, Palmetto, the photos that they took, basically of the three buildings, are here. So basically, what I'm looking at right now is Jigsaw's lair. Wayne, 213 Spigeon Street. It's an old list that used to be a mannequin factory. I do want to draw your attention to the street one more time. It is Palmetto Street, but in the movie, it was a fake street. They called it Stygian Street, but nope. In real life, it's Palmetto, magic of Hollywood. You can kind of see the Starkman building all the way down there at the end of the street. Now this building right here, if you read it, it says Warehouses Barker Brothers Factories. Now this building can also be seen in the movie Saw, as well as that building right there to the left of the word Warehouses. That is the old mannequin factory. That is where Jigsaw's lair was. Well in the movie. Hollywood magic all around. 
Now I should go without saying, but I just want to point out that this was only technically the exteriors of Jigsaw's lair. The interiors were all filmed at Lacey Street Production Studios, that second floor that we couldn't get to. We saw the stairs, we saw the, the freight elevator going up. Now keep in mind that was back in 2004 and now it's 2021 at the time of filming this. Now back then it was an abandoned building which stood in for the fictional old mannequin factory. Now it's an apartment building. I always wonder, the people that live here, do they know what this place is? Never stays a day. A bad luck's always a coming my way. 